What's up, everyone? So everyone has been asking me how I make these custom uh, trading cards from MLB The Show, and I've made them for Madden and 2K as well, upon request. And I'm going to go through a quick tutorial today so I can satisfy all of your questions, or at least most of your questions, and um, put this out there. So if you guys could do me a favor real quick. One of my goals is one day is to get one of those YouTube plaques that says 100,000 subscribers, the nice silver, silver plaque, and I would really like to have that on my wall somewhere. So if you guys could help me out and subscribe to this channel, and I will be updating more MLB videos, and then I'll also be updating NCAA 25 football videos as well. So let's get into this tutorial so I don't waste any more of your time. Um, real quick, what you got to do first is go into, obviously, MLB The Show, into the game. This is how you're going to get the best screenshot of the card that you want. So we'll go ahead and hop into the game here. Pretty simple. You're going to head over to My Inventory, and then go to My MLB Players. And uh, if you want the parallel off of the card, then you should just create a new account so that all of the cards don't have any parallel levels on them. Obviously, they have a green parallel on some of these because I use them. But if you want to take a picture of any card, you can just go over here to Weight Box, for example, and then hit the top button. It's triangle on PS5, you know, go to the info section and then take a screenshot. I don't know how this works on Xbox, but to take a screenshot on PlayStation, you just hit the button on the left with the three little lines at the top it's kind of the symbol for a screenshot and then take screenshot all right so keep in mind here you have the info of the player here you have the picture card obviously the most important part which is the front of the card in my opinion and then if you want the wheel the attribute wheel go back out of that and back into the inventory and then take another screenshot so you have the wheel in the bottom right now what i'm going to do is take my usb drive so you got to have a usb stick okay all right, so then you're simply going to take the USB stick, put it into your PlayStation, and, and then you're going to move those photos over. So if I go home and go over to Media Gallery in the PlayStation app, or in the PlayStation Home, you can select the photos you want to bring over. So I'll select these two, and then I will bring them over to um, copy the USB drive. All right, so now that's complete. There's no ejection you have to do. You can just take the USB stick out of the PlayStation. All right, so once I'm done with that, let's go over to our computer. So one thing to keep in mind, all of these tips are my tips for how I do my cards. I learned all of these methods by looking up YouTube videos and looking up things online of how to make them. So go check out my entire playlist. I'll connect it here of the tips and uh, other videos I watched to, in order to get to where I am today with these cards that I have. Um, it was a very long process to learn how to make these and I had to do a lot of prototypes and a lot of, you know, throwing out of materials and stuff, but these videos really help. So if you want to get better at it, don't just watch this video that I'm showing you. Check out all these other videos as well because there's different ways to do it. So, All right, so now when I plug my USB stick into my computer, I have the PS5 folder that comes up. I'm going to click into that and go into create, go into screenshots, and then MLB The Show 23 or actually 24 for this card uh, in particular. And then you can go into these to find the screenshots that you took. So if I go and click open Wade Boggs, I'm gonna open this. On Windows 11 and above, and I think Windows 10, there's a tool called the Snipping Tool. It's really easy to use. It's S-N-I-P-P-I-N-G, Snipping Tool. And I open it every picture in the Snipping Tool so that I can just crop it down like this. And it's easier to do this than to crop it by drawing the crop section by just bringing these corners down. So I'm gonna bring the corner down and I'll get my face out of the way real quick. Just try to get it as best as you can. Remember, we can always like cut this out with an X-Acto knife or scissors um, if we get too much of the edge. So I'll click the check mark there. I like the way that looks and then hit save as. So if every card I make, I make a folder. Uh, this is 2024. So we'll go into 24 and make a weight box folder. And then so I can remember, I just name it something like uh, Boggs Front because it's the front of the card. So for the edits of the back of the card, I use a software called Pixlr Express. And Pixlr Express is a dollar a month service to just do some really easy editing online. It's not Photoshop or anything fancy, uh, but it gets the job done for my purposes. And you can use this for free, but you only can save up to three photos a day, I believe, without an account. Now for the back of the card, you wanna make sure the pixel to inch ratio is correct. A standard baseball card is three and a half inches by two and a half inches. 
So I want to do inches to pixel conversion and we can go into this. And if I want to go from 2.5 inches, that's 240 pixels, 3.5 inches, 336. So 240 by 336 is what your, uh, is what your height and width should be. So if I go 240, create, and that'll give me the background I need for the card. So I already have some made before, so I usually just duplicate these. So if I'm going with a hitter card, I duplicate one of the hitter cards and I go into that. Uh, I have Adley Rutschman here, so I'm gonna delete that because this is gonna be Wade Boggs. And then I have his attributes here, so you can just copy these over from the game to the software here, Pixlr. All right, so you can type these in, um, whatever his contact and power ratings are and all that. And then I just find a picture of the player on that team Try to get it close to the year as possible, but way bogs are not really gonna know. All right. Um, and just find a good image that would fit it, copy it and paste it over to Pixlr. And then I just decrease the opacity or the transparency and make sure I put it behind the text. All right, sometimes it comes into Pixlr a little blurry, but once you save and export the picture, it's gonna uh, look clear. So don't worry if it looks a little bit blurry in here, for some reason it just does that when you zoom in especially, but then it ends up looking clear when you save it. So um, if you need to find the attributes to someone, I usually go to show zone and you can look up their card by going to the player database, filtering out their name and go box here. All right, and then you can just copy or you can put the window side by side so you can easily see what you're doing with the attributes and just make sure you get the attributes right. Sometimes they're backwards here. For example, in the game, it'll show you with contact uh, right against righties first, and then up here it says contact lefty. So just make sure you pay attention to what you're doing. So now I can go ahead and save Wade Boggs. We'll go into our card folder again, 24, and got Wade Boggs here. And I'll just name this Boggs back because that's the back of the card. All right, so now what I do is I have a cutting machine so I can get a perfect rectangle. And I think that's, you know, that's up to you if you want to buy it or not. It, the cutting machine I bought was $300. So, um, you know, it, it's an investment. It was an investment and I wanted to do it. It's part of the hobby. And there's other ways you can do it. Now, with the cutting machine came a cutting software, so it's called Cricut Design Space. I'm not sure if you actually need a machine to have this software, so you can try downloading it without it if you want, um, but this is what I use to size out my pictures. So I go into Upload, and then I go to Upload Image, and then find the pictures that we just got. So I go to 24, Wade Boggs, box front. Start with that, hit Continue in the bottom right, and then you're not gonna touch anything here, you're gonna just hit Apply and Continue again. And then I'm gonna click flat graphic. That's the ultimate result we want. And then once it comes in, uh, I'll add it to my collection so I have a folder of all these cards and then hit upload. Now when it uploads, you're gonna to wanna to resize it. Remember I said before a playing card size, or sorry, a baseball card size typically is three and a half by two and, two and a half inches, two and a half by three and a half. So if I lock this dimension up here and type in 2.5, It'll get me pretty close on the other end. It's 3.522, so I just unlock it, and then I alter it, and you can kind of notice it doesn't really change the actual size of the image to a point where it's noticeable. So I usually do exactly 2.5 by 3.5, so that way they all end up the same size. And typically I can fit six cards on a sheet, at least the front, and, um, this is the part where it gets tricky and you're gonna have to invest even more money because you're gonna have to buy a printer, obviously, if you don't have one. But uh, you are gonna wanna have a printer that has the capability to print photo paper. All right, so I have a Canon and I'm gonna show you what Canon model printer I have in a second here. Um, but first, let me load in some more cards and then we'll get to that. All right, so now that I have all my cards loaded into the software Cricut Design Space, I I'm gonna do something um, that's not on the computer. It's gonna be on my phone on the Cricut Design Space app because for some reason I'm having trouble connecting my machine 
to my computer via Bluetooth, but that's normally how you would do it. And you don't even need to have these lined up the way you want it. You can have them all scrambled because you're gonna edit that in the next part, but you're basically gonna, gonna go up to the make part and um, hit make. Now, before I do that, so if you want a parallel, I edit that in the Pixlr online app again. Make sure it's transparent so that you can have a see-through. And then I add it to canvas. And then if I want to add a parallel to this, I'm gonna add uh, 2.5 inches by 3.5 on the P5 frame. So this is like a P5 frame that I can use and I can duplicate it. Now, what I wanna do here is if I wanna put it over Julio, right? I just wanna make sure I line it up so it looks good. And then you can zoom in a little and make it easier on yourself. Um, right about there, get you a little down, a little over. Looks good enough. Um, what you wanna do here is find that frame. So you click on it, it's gonna be highlighted right there. Hold shift and then hold the card, click the card that you wanna attach it to and then click attach down here. All right, so that'll make it attach to the card. All right, so there's P5 Julio. Um, and then to get rid of it, you can just delete it. All right. And then detach. So now the card is free again, but that's how you put a, a P5 frame on the card. All right, so if you wanna attach your, um, if you're using a, a Cricut machine, this is how you would go ahead and print it. Um, obviously you wanna make sure your printer is all hooked up and connect it via Bluetooth, same with the Cricut machine. Now there's two pages. In order to fit them on one page, I like to move all the cards to one page. Like I said, I can get six on one page by doing this move right here. Got to reorient them a little bit. You can have two vertical cards and three, hor sorry, four horizontal cards. So I'm going to put one down here. I'll leave one up there and we'll turn Tarek Scooble here on its side. We'll turn Julio on his side and put them up in the corner right there. And just try to get as best as you can. It's not going to snap to the grid or anything. I wish it would, but we're going to use the cutting machine anyway. And then I'll turn Ellie. All right, so the vertical one has to go in the top left and the other vertical one has to go in the bottom right. Uh, it's the only way I can figure that out. I've messed around with it a couple of times. But then you're gonna hit continue and it's gonna try to connect to my machine. My machine, it's not connected, but if it were, I'm gonna show you the rest of the steps on my phone. And this way you'll get two ways of, of learning how to do this, one on the computer and then obviously on the mobile app, which I think is a little bit easier surprisingly, even though this seemed pretty easy. So let's go over to there real quick. So what I have here is a Cricut Explorer 3. I'm gonna turn it on and you're gonna to have to do a machine setup if it's your first time using it. I would recommend just looking up tutorial videos on the Cricut website or on YouTube. So I don't wanna run through it with you, but you're gonna go through some calibration steps and um, all that stuff. So make sure you do that. All right, so next you're gonna make sure you are connected to your Explorer machine on Bluetooth. All right, so there I'm connected. And then in design space, we'll go to upload and we need to upload the recent ones. We have Ronald on there already, so we want Wade Boggs, we want Ellie and Scooble, and we'll go to View, Canvas. All right, so this is the back of each card. You wanna do the backs and fronts all at the same time. All right, so we'll take Scooble here, and since this was uploaded on, or sorry, it was edited on Pixlr to be 3.5 by 2.5 inches, it doesn't load into Cricut that way, so we're gonna go here and just type in 2.5, but it's already formatted to be the exact same ratio, so it'll update the width, I'm sorry, the length of the card to be 3.5. And so you just have to enter 2.5 for the backs. All right, so we'll do that to each card. And again, this part of the Cricut um, design space doesn't have to be in order in terms of where you're actually placing the card on the mat in the software. All right, that'll be on the next step when you see me rearrange and rotate each card. And my Mid-Atlantic accent is coming out when I said rotate. All right, so 2.5. All right, so on the next page, you're gonna to swipe to the right so you can get to the second page and move each of these cards so that they're all on one page. All right, so I'm gonna move Ellie and Scooble to new. Move Boggs down there. Remember, I can have two vertical and the rest have to be horizontal. All right, so that doesn't matter. That's a little bit Rotate it a little too far. Cutting machine will do the work for that one, but I'll try to make it as good as I can. All 
All right, so when I have it oriented the way I want, I hit next. If my printer is already hooked up to it and my Cricut machine is already hooked up by Bluetooth, it'll bring you to the next page. If it doesn't bring you to this page, that means you don't have something connected. All right, so I'm gonna hit send to printer. Now, I have a Canon TS9500 series. That's the type of printer I have and I'll show you in video. Before I hit print, I wanna to go to media and quality. Print quality, I choose best. And then feed from, I go to rear tray because it's the easiest way to feed the paper for the type of paper that I'm using. Usually cardstock and especially the photo paper can get jammed up in the regular tray. Not so much the cardstock, but usually the photo paper gets jammed up, all right? Um, so we'll put rear tray and we'll feed our cardstock to the rear tray. All right, so I pulled out my printer so you can see it here. TS9521C is on the front and the series is the 500 at the end there. But this is the type of cardstock I'm using. All right, so it's a 110 pound cardstock. You can pretty much find it at any office supply store. Any thicker cardstock, you might have to order online, but this will do for what we're doing because we're adding another layer to it. So this sheet of cardstock um, is a, almost the thickness of a regular baseball card, but the reason the card will look, seem thicker is because we're adding two more layers onto it. All right, and I'll show you what those two layers are after we do this process. So I'm gonna add this to the rear tray. And then just remember we said we were going to um, print from the rear tray. So on here, I can finally go hit print. And then the next selection I'm gonna do on this app is go to all materials and I might get a message here from my printer. It's gonna tell me the following paper is not loaded in the rear tray. Just hit next and then hit print with the loaded paper and that will start printing. All right, so now it's actually printing the data. Now on here, I'm gonna go ahead and click all materials and I'm just gonna go down to cardstock, 100 pounds. Even though it's not 110 pounds, I'm gonna click 100 pounds. And then on the pressure, I'm gonna click more. All right, so only for the backs of the cards, I do more. And then it's gonna tell me to load the tools and mat and I'm gonna show you how to put that on the Cricut mat. So here you can see I used the mat a couple times. It's a sort of adhesive mat. It's a standard grip. If you use the strong grip from the Cricut mat, it'll be very hard to peel off and it'll likely bend on you. So basically I just put this on here and line it up in the corner the exact same way I had it in the Design Space app. All right, from here, I'm gonna put it into my Cricut machine and just line it up. I should have a blinking button to align the, uh, the mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that. And sometimes you just want to hold it until it gets through. And then from here, it's going to line up the, the mat. So it looks like it read the print lines just fine, and now it's going to cut all the cards. So the print lines are those little uh, black corner lines on the edges of the paper. All right, and then once it's done, I can hit this to unload it. I'm gonna make sure I catch this. So I'm gonna be holding this at the same time and that will come out. All right, and then this is pretty easy to just peel off. Um, and when you peel these off, just make sure you can either peel off the entire sheet like this or peel each card individually, but eventually you have to peel off each card individually and just make sure you don't bend it too much when you peel it off. And there you have your card stock. So you have the back of the card uh, done and ready. So then we can go back to the design space to do the front version of the card. And you can see this is a little bit of a process. It takes a little bit of time. So I'll go to upload, upload images, and then go to all the fronts. So Scooble, Ellie, got Julio, 
And then we had Acuna, Wade Boggs, and then Mike Trout, who I got to find. Got to find him. All right, then I'll click Make It. And over here, I'm going to rearrange these. So let me swipe over and move these over first. All right, so I got them oriented the way I want. I'm going to hit Next. All right, send to printer. Go to media quality, best, feed from the rear tray. All right, and then this is where I use a holographic sticker paper. All right, so this is premium holographic sticker paper. There's the cracked ice version. There's a couple of other versions you can find on Amazon. I usually just buy them online because I don't find them in the stores that much. But we're gonna take a uh, sheet of this. And like I said, this is the cracked ice. There's also the regular finish one, and that just looks like uh, glossy photo paper. But it is sticker paper. It's just without the holographic. This is the holographic one. And uh, every time you use this, it's going to get a little bit of ink on your fingers. So make sure you wash your hands after you're done. We're going to load this into the rear tray. Then we'll go back to our app. And pay attention here because when I hit print, uh, it's going to ask me for the material again, and I'm going to type in sticker paper, or just sticker. All right, I'll get that message on the, the printer again. We're going to hit print with the loaded paper. And then, um, yeah, so I'm going to do printable waterproof sticker set white holographic. It's going to give me a warning and saying, before cutting, apply laminate sheet over printed sticker sheet. I'm going to cheat and actually do it after I cut because it seems easier to apply the self-adhesive laminate sheet over each individual card rather than the entire sheet. That's why you don't get bubbles or like dirt underneath the laminate in between the card. So I like to do it for each card and not for the entire sheet. And then pressure you can leave as default for the front. So the self-adhesive laminate is this Avery brand. I just use this brand. You can buy them in a 50 pack, self-adhesive laminating sheets. All right, it's kind of expensive, but you get 50 sheets per pack and I usually am able to get um, nine cards out of each sheet. So if we pull one of these out, you'll notice there's a grid on the back. I like to cut these into thirds. So I cut up a line here, here, and then two lines across this way so that you get nine um, sheets out of this big sheet. All right, so we have the holographic sheet now here. And you're gonna to have to pay attention to this part as well. All right, so we're gonna put this on the mat the same way we did with the back cardstock. And the only thing different I'm gonna do this time is after I put this down, I'm gonna to avoid touching the actual cards so that I don't smudge the ink. So I'm just gonna do the edges here, a little bit in the middle, press down so it sticks to the mat enough. All right, and then I'm gonna grab some matte scotch tape. So you wanna make sure you're using the matte finish magic tape from Scotch. All right, and what I'm actually gonna do is put this over the print lines, and that's those black lines on the corner here, and then you have it down here as well. So I'm gonna put them over these because the Cricut machine does not pick up the print lines when there is a holographic on the sheet for some reason. Um, so I've tried it before and it would make the cuts terrible. It'll cut through the card and it'll be pretty much useless. So I'm gonna put the matte tape on each corner where the black lines are, and just gonna put it over the black lines. Now, if your matte is losing its stickiness, I would just order a new one, but if you wanna keep using it, you can also tape the, lamp, or the, tape the holographic sheet onto the matte, you know, like this or something. But I'm gonna leave it because this matte is still good. So we got that corner, two more to go. All right, so all the print lines are taped on this, so I can go ahead and put it in the Craig machine. And here we're just doing the same thing as the first step with the cardstock, only this time with the holographic paper. All right, so after this is done, I'm gonna take this tool uh, that comes with the Cricut um, tool pack, or you can buy it somewhere online. And it's just a, a tool to help me pick up the sticker paper from the sheet, all right? So you notice this doesn't cut all the way through once I pick this up. So I'm just gonna try to grab a corner here. We will take Wade Boggs. All 
All right, and I'm just gonna lift it up and I'm gonna pull it off with my fingers. So now I have basically a sticker. All right, this is a waterproof sticker. Um, so I'm gonna put this to the side and I'm gonna grab my Wade Boggs backing. So we have the back, we have the front, I'm just gonna turn it over. There's a couple different ways to do this, um, but basically you are gonna apply it by hand. Now, the good thing about this is, I forgot to tell you, the printer add, is gonna add bleed to the edges and that makes it easier for the Cricut machine to cut the card out perfectly on the edge. So you see there's some ink left over. Um, that mean, That's just because I added bleed and that's one of the options you can do within the app. So you do want the ink to bleed a little bit so that you get a perfect cut. All right, so now I'm gonna apply this. All right, so you'll notice I have a little bit of white. That's the card stock at the top there. I can trim that with an X-Acto knife and a ruler to make sure it's good. But before we do that, I'm gonna apply the self-adhesive laminate. So that's an important part to make sure the ink does not smudge off of this. And especially if you put water on it or something. Um, but here's the card front and back. So here's the laminate. So I have them cut out into thirds. It's a little bit bigger than the actual card. That's what we want. So I'm just gonna peel this. And then apply it right over weight box, just like that. And then we're gonna take a mini squeegee tool like this and just flatten it out, get all the bubbles out, if there are any, and make sure it looks nice and good. All right, and that's what truly makes this like a baseball card, almost. Um, is the, you know, protective laminate, obviously. Um, that's what real cards have. I don't know if it's applied the same way, but... So now you have the ex excess laminate on the outside here. So you can either use uh, a pair of scissors, which is what I use most of the time, believe it or not. Or you can use an X-Acto knife. All right, so just make sure you're careful with these. They are very sharp uh, with the interchangeable blade here. And you can use a ruler to cut out the extra laminate. Now, the way I do it with scissors is I just turn it over to the back here and then I cut up into this. Make sure you have, I bought a really good pair of scissors for this and then I can just glide along the edge here because the laminate's really easy to cut. And then I'll take care of the edges. Sometimes the sticker paper does cross over into that excess area in which case you will have to cut a little bit of the sticker paper as well. So when you're gliding, you just gotta make sure you have a firm, steady grip on the card while you're doing that and the pair of scissors. All right, this is the top of the card. So after we do the laminate, I can trim this and I'd rather do that with an X-Acto knife and a ruler so that it's straight. All right, so then, then we just have that excess there. And there you have it. That is your card. That is your Wade Box card, front and back holographic. And then I like to, you can buy a 25 pack or a 100 pack of these top loaders. And then they come with the plastic penny sleeve. So you just go ahead and put that in there. and then put Wade Boggs in the top loader. And then there you have it. All right, so there you have it. Uh, make sure you guys go ahead and follow me on Twitter. That's where I post all of my cards. I also post them on Instagram and TikTok. So you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. If you have any questions, DM me on Twitter. That's probably the best place to do it. And as far as this tutorial, I hope it helped. Go check out the other playlist. 
Please subscribe so that I can try to reach my goal of 100,000 one day. Be on the lookout for the NCAA 25 football videos. I'm going to be uploading some NCAA 06 football videos, a little bit of a throwback um, from my day, and we will go from there. And of course, MLB videos as normally scheduled. All right, hope you guys enjoyed.